1945. The RAF opens its doors to the public for the first time in six years. And on many an airfield, people peer into planes to find out what makes them tick. But today, to the youth of Britain, warplanes are but pieces of history. For on this September the 15th, the guns are silent. But things were very different on that other September the 15th. On that Sunday morning, it was radar that first gave warning of the coming storm. Warning of an enemy armada assembling in the Pas de Calais. The wires started to hum. Wires that led to every gun site and airfield in southern England. As yet, the enemy was but a pattern on the radar screen symbol on the plotting table. But these things told us that this was the biggest thing yet. Of his losses, the enemy was breaking through by sheer weight of numbers. The Germans forced their way up the Thames to the outskirts of London itself. But in the factories, the wheels continued to turn. For here, final victory was in the making. chance to select his target. For so persistent was our attack that accurate bombing became impossible. The harassed Germans let go of their bombs at random. By 
this time, the battle was raging over a dozen counties, from Wimbledon to Subrinness, from Dover to the Isle of Wight. Watchers knew that the tide had turned, for the Armada had broken up into lone raiders struggling to escape. won a victory, a victory that opened the way to all the victories yet to come. El Alamein, Maris, Salerno, Casino, Caen, Falaise, the Rhine. For the victory of September the 15th won us time. Time to build, time to organize, time to finish the job. So we, the many, honor the few. The few to whom final victory was but a dream. A dream for which they fought and died.